All right, hey guys, welcome back. It is the fifth gen Hyundai Elantra guy, and today we got ourselves a special install. As you can see right here, this is an AEM air to fuel ratio gauge, but it's not the usual UEGO, UEGO version, which you have to wire in, but it's actually the OBD2 one, which makes the install super cool because all you have to do as an installer is run it through the OBD2 connection, run a four pin, or basically it's eight pin, four pin wire to your gauge, wire up a positive uh, 12 volt switch on, and make sure it's fused, ground it to somewhere on the body, and then you run the other one, of course from your sensor, through the firewall, and then into your sensor, and it's already running. And what's nice is because it's an OBD2 connector, not only does it stream installation, but if you're using software like HP Tuners or any other OBD2 streaming and tuning software which this is compatible with, it'll stream the data straight through. And or if you're running accessories on the OBD2, you plug this in first and then anything after because it comes with a uh, sorry, what is that? A male and then to a female, so you can plug something in and it essentially streams out your install to make it super simple. And as you guys probably noticed, there's some different things with the car. Uh, I'm gonna go over another video, but you could probably spot some of it. I got myself some. Uh, a new front splitter there with canards integrated, so I took the old ones off. Little red show off thing there, and I put the little garage cheap uh, lip thing that you put under this. So I got a splitter lip and canards now. And I got myself a little edit there on my Hyundai, which is where I put the text right there in front. And I think that looks just pretty clean like that. I might just leave the Hyundai OEM grill logo there, but originally I put that there because I'm going to be deleting it with another mesh to kind of just do black on black to match the bottom mesh. We also got ourselves some new decals for our livery, so to say, NGK and NK. I'm not officially sponsored, but you know, I like them. And of course, uh, we got ourselves some tire decals and of course sporting the hand-cooked tires. Got the Ventus V2s concept, or Ventus v, uh, V12s. Sorry, I get them mixed up, but yeah guys, essentially that's pretty much it for the video today, what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna go over the contents of what's inside. Now your box itself is gonna come with a few different things. Sorry, this is kind of mismatched. And actually this is part two of the video, so one of the items in here has already been wired into my car, which you'll see later in the video, I'll explain everything. Basically I tried doing this yesterday, but because of a last minute adjustment for how the pass through from the O2 sensor or air to fuel sensor is gonna get into the cabin, um, and I was meeting up with some friends about to go get some dinner at a new ramen place in our area. Basically, your little AEM decal. So that's not going to be there first, but that's what you see because, again, my box is kind of all messy. Get yourself some detailed instructions. Basically, everything you're going to need to do this install is right here in front of you. And as you can see, with the 5 amp fuse to 12 volt switch, you can actually read that right in there and they want that 5 amp, which I'll explain over the tools you'll need, what we'll use to accomplish that. Besides that, you get yourself your harness, which goes to your LS, I think it's 239 or 209 connector, which goes to your air, air to fill, and the fully wired 8 pin, actually, actually it's 7 pins, but it's an 8 pin with 7 wired, which goes to your sensor, or your air to fill ratio gauge. Got yourself the gauge right here. Very nice design, uh, sim super simple. You know, they you can change your bezel if you want. Got the little locks in the back. There's your top and bottom pin layout, and that's what you plug in. And as you can see, it's nice and simple. You guys have seen these before, so that's definitely gonna be cool. Cause I already know I've been running lean lately. And actually, just kind of like a hint, before we see it show it in the video later after the install is complete with the gauge pod, I actually was running lean because I wanted to test this out the, yesterday when I thought I would finish the install. I wanted to make sure it actually worked with my car, and it does. So I'll, you guys will see those numbers. <laughs> but um, yeah, very cool, you get that. The buttons down here also, uh, they're not rubberized, they're, they're tactile, so you know they'll not worry about them getting stuck in season and all that. Now, you don't have to get this version, but I decided to get it because when I really get with my supercharger project and uh, other things later in the car, I wanted a faster sensor, which this is the nice, really super fast, responsive Bosch sensor, which I'm not going to use now because my one I have in there, Denso, is pretty responsive already, and this will just be ready here when I want a new one. Plus, you get extra length, which will help with bigger engine bays and kind of give you some more working room with your harness about 
maybe about a foot, depending on where your O2 sensor is located. But yeah, very cool. We're just going to save that. Some, a little bung if you're going to have to weld on your O2 sensor to a downpipe or your manifold. And some butt splices. And uh, this little rubber thing here, which I think is if you're mounting it inside a, uh, a gauge pod. But our gauge pod already comes with that. And just, just to show you guys real quick, the one I got. I just got the one from Glow Shift, which is a single. It's kind of long for some reason, but yeah, you get a little foam mount on the bottom wire cover there which we'll use and then a little gasket goes inside basically for rubberized to tighten up the fit and then yeah so you can see right there but yeah guys that's pretty much it so let's go ahead and go with over the tools that you guys are need and get on with the install all right guys some tools you're gonna definitely want and supplies to do this job in our car specifically of course zip ties to tidy up the excess cabling which there definitely will be some in our car because we have such a small car some wire and this is a 16 gauge that i got at uh, i think walmart and yes it's just red i didn't want to spend money on also black since i'm only the only one working on this car what i actually do is i just get heat shrink tubing for my negative lead and i just basically covered in that and that's that's how i know it's my negative um, the thing that's going to make this very cool for our car well, what you probably do for most is you get a Basically, just a 12 volt add a circuit fuse tap. And I explained this later in the video, but basically, you tap this into, and you know, we have the short mini fuses, not with a long prong, but this still fits right in and it gives clearance. And essentially, it lets you, what's cool about it is it lets you fuse the old line exactly to spec, and then lets you fuse up the new line, which goes here, which we can add our 5 amp. And I explain later what we tap into, which is actually a 20 amp switch on, and I'll explain that later. Uh, but yeah, these are the ones I got. I'll link, of course, everything in the description. Socket set for doing anything related to, uh, which we actually use it for removing one of the uh, nuts for the negative or grounding inside the engine bay. Or not inside the engine bay, inside the cabin. Of course, you're going to want some fuses, which I have in here, mixed with some terminal connectors. I end up actually using one of the uh, pronged ones there, the red. Uh, bladed prongs are actually made into these type of things and then I use that as my ground and I sandwich that under the uh, washer and nut. I brought some vampire clips or t-taps in case we need it but I didn't actually end up using these. And of course heat shrink tubing. This is what I use to do my wiring. I did it for my stereo so I just basically recommend it for basically doing it quick without soldering. And it, they hold tight and I think they're they're just as fine as long as it's not getting like really heavy pulling or vibration You guys will be good. These are the posy twisted connectors for 18 to 26 gauge Which is what we're working with the wiring on the unit the harness the one that I already plugged in is 20 gauge on both the black ground and uh, Positive lead which they say 20 gauge or thicker or sorry. Yeah, basically thicker Which would be the 16 that we have so it's fine to tap that in Brought some white heat shrink tubing I didn't end up using but you know, I just bring what I need you guys are going to want also a multimeter and in case this is, you're installing this on another car so you guys can test which uh, of your fuses are basically switch on which is what you want you don't want it always on and uh, i show that later at that part so how to do that of course drill if you need it um, drilling which we will do later because i'm going to be explaining the routing the re-decided routing inside the engine bay to get basically the o2 sensor wire into the cabin other tools you guys are going to want are of course scissors and steel snips if you're using the steel cable ties. Wire crimper which is also a stripper and cutter but I had to get one that had a crimp in it. Might as well get something that basically besides a dedicated crimper um, for the butt splices or putting on those little prong terminals is that uh, I'll have a second um, wire stripper and cutter if I need to. And I have my primary which I highly recommend. These are the south wire snips locking and good for stripping pulling and cutting so got that if you're going to be going through the firewall method and going through that hassle you probably want some trim panel body panel pieces which i brought because i thought i was going to do that method but i'm just telling you now in case depending on your car that might be easier or if you're doing it this way on this car have those to get all that stuff off so let's go ahead and start guys and as always guys wear eye protection all right guys so as you guys know the gauge itself comes with the obd do and it has the pass through right here so or right here sorry so this will go to your obd2 and then you have two leads from here split from the wire first this is going to go to the eight pin which but it's only wired for four on your aem air to fuel ratio gauge and that gets plugged in the back and they have two requirements here 
they want a ground to body and they want a 12 volt switched power source which as you guys know we're using the fuse box and fuse panel to do that so the best way I've determined to do it is we're gonna go inside our fuse panel all right hopefully I can do this with not free hands but we have a 20 amp fuse right there which is second down fourth row over now the way you test these fuses is you either get one of those uh, testing uh, flathead or screwdriver looking devices where you attach a pin to ground and you basically just touch the little exposed pins on the top might have to press it in kind of and if it lights up you know you got basically continuity and you know you don't want to use that fuse because that means we're having power as you can see with ignition off now I'm recommending you guys use this one because I already found it for you and it's 20 amp fused so we can see here that I already removed it now we use the mini type mini flat uh, short type which is where the prongs don't actually extend outwards from the colored plastic base of the fuse which I'll just get it and show you real quick yep there it is right there so you guys can see that's our 20 amp fuse and then you just kind of poke the little prongs on top and with me I used a multimeter so you just ground somewhere on the body I actually just used a little this piece of metal right here with some alligator clips then use the little uh, probe or the you know default sort of pointy part they have on the multimeter stuck it in both ends test ignition this goes ignition on now you might be thinking what's next well we use these right here which are circuit tap-in or fuse tap-ins now I'm gonna link these of course in the description and they're very cool because not only do you retain the original factory fusing if there's a guy on the Amazon reviews who reviewed it and said very specific setup for this which I'll explain to you guys but basically Uh, you also want the old fuse right here, or the OEM 20 amp, which you see this is the long probe type, so it's good, it'll stick out. And I just got a little box at O'Reilly's there of a combination box, and it has the 5 amp and the 20, so we have a new 20 long prong. And then we have the 5 amp as well, which is kind of messy right here, I'm trying to this stuff all organized where'd I put it and our 5 amp which is what AEM recommends they want a I can again do this with one hand here a little instruction guide and there it is right there 5 amp inline on a switch 12 volt power supply which of course is the red pin right here and so that we're gonna splice in to this little butt connector here and this we're gonna splice some wire on put one of these little loopies on or something that's gonna work out and we're gonna ground and then I'm gonna probably just ground it right there on the metal somewhere attach it right underneath the screw and the washer into the body real tight and that's pretty much it guys so let's go ahead and wire it through and we'll get through with the rest all right guys so we go we went ahead and did our wiring here we have the OBD unit plugged in of course you guys have probably seen this before this is the device that leads to my other devices the power for the throttle controller and also the splitter cable and the other OBD2 engine gauge and of course remember I told you about that wiring so you can see the fuse sitting in there the positive and then I just use this little ground up here as you guys can see this yellow yellow cord right there that's the stock ECU ground I think and then I just loosen the nut a little bit careful not to completely unloosen it put in a little bung there or crimped it down on top of a little metal prong which goes in those little clips and then tighten it down good and then that's our ground all right guys a few things to note here now this is our obd panel fuse connect uh fuse uh curry cover and now you guys are probably real realize already but the opening hole is definitely not that big so originally i had this unit right here which was basically what, uh, the tap in for the positive and negative for my engine throttle controller which it requires and I just basically got a splitter so ignore the back one this would split to two and one of them goes to the again that power source that I just tapped the wires into and then sealed off and that one's can't be used for anything else unless I unseal it and plug anything else into it then one of the second splitter goes into another splitter which is one to three and then one of those three uh, powers my gauge and gets data for to that which is the 
kind of overall RPM and oil temp gauge, kind of just overall everything, which is really nice about it, even boost. So um, don't need to have multiple gauges. And then that's basically it. Then the other two are free if I'm gonna do my, my diagnostic tool or whatever else. So right here you can see, because as I explained in the video, we installed it already. This is the AEM right here, which goes in first, primarily. That's the one going off into the fuse tap which you guys can see it right there, which I explain in the video anyway, but um, and I explain which one we're gonna use later in it, uh, specifically so you guys don't have to worry about. This is all the wire, because again, I paused it. I'm gonna be kind of neat and uh, straighten this up, uh, completing the install today. And then from the AEM, I have my main one plugged in. Now I had to make an adjustment here because it is kind of a tight fit, but as you guys can see, you just kind of have to work with it a little bit. And then just do that, and it basically closes up, you know, pretty fine. Not too much of a big deal, but it's not ideal again, but it does, it does work. We have actually a wire going off to the side there from that one, so might need to actually cut off another piece here, which would be the, this, this part, which I'll probably take home and do. I kind of did some more modding, cut off a little bit, maybe a quarter inch lower, because this was a quarter inch higher here. Remove that, so the problem is actually this here catching on the wire or right angle there. So I'm gonna take this back home and cut it. But yeah, I, I just use a uh, soldering iron and the flat tip kind, and I just basically melted the plastic across. Probably sand to make it look nice, but that's what you guys wanna be aware of. All right guys, just to kind of go over what you would generally do in this situation is you would tap through your vehicle's firewall, which you can see we have one right there which is actually the passenger, which you can kind of see the tape kind of came unwrapped because I already tried messing around with it and it's just a pain. So I don't want to tap into by cutting the rubber because this is all set up. Basically they have the wire go through a rubber feed in the middle and then they basically tape off that super tight rubber feed to make sure it's like tight. And they have this EPDM rubber socket here, which you know I made sure was basically back in the tracks because you want it to keep all that stuff off out of the cabin basically and then we have another one right here which probably even harder to see because the the lighting but it's basically right there which goes right underneath the fender well and that one's got some bolts and or sorry nuts on it holding it in and some other stuff so basically too much to get to that that's too much of a pain so I actually discovered something for you guys which you guys will love if you're gonna put this in your car and it's basically a solution that I think is perfect so we're actually gonna run the wire right here this spot right here goes right into the fender well, or into the fender well, right here, right? Completely sealed off. Now here's the thing. This actually will go straight through here, and then actually, I already took off the little, uh, they had a little, one of these things on there, uh, to secure in the paneling, and I think the hole will be big enough. If not, we'll have to make some adjustments and drill in here, tap in basically into it you can see it's already moving by just pushing that in so this really holds it and see what's nice about this spot right here is this spot back here because they use it for the wiring for the uh, the door wiring harness and everything it's completely isolated meaning if there's a wire coming from out here when this door is closed you can see it happening right now it's got like an open spot, basically. It's completely isolated. It won't get crushed right here, as long as you don't go on this side. And by happen chance, I actually found there's a grommet in here. Now this grommet, I already took it out. You can see the little hole right there. It's actually a rubberized grommet they use, which is this, I already took it out. And I'm gonna make a hole for the wire. And that wire, that hole actually goes straight in to here, into the body. Basically, we don't have to worry about going through the firewall because the clearances are just way too small and be uh, hard for us to do it. And so, this is the method I recommend. If you guys are gonna take the firewall, just be warned. I don't exactly know how you get to it, but you probably gonna have to remove your whole airbag set up here, this panel, this panel. Get the tape off on the other side because they got it taped up, so you're not gonna be able to really push it through. And Or if, even if you tap a hole into the existing grommet without going through the tape, you have to worry about sealing that up tight and then, again, fetching it because it's Basically, I don't know exactly how you get this all off because I haven't done that before. Most I've done is taken off the center to do my wiring and do that for my stereo, which is before I started doing videos anyway. But um, I might go over that in another video if you guys want questions about it. 
Um, but yeah, that's the plan, guys. So we're going to wire this through, and once I get it wired through, we're going to continue about wiring it in here, installing the pod, seeing the air to fuel, and what readings we get from basically idle, because I just moved my car over just from this morning. And then, uh, yeah, closing off the video, guys. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, to basically review what we did here, rather than using this little hole here because it's too small, because it actually connects up with the frame, and we also want this because it's going to also act as a kind of keeping this piece in tight with the screw. So we just tapped our own hole here, and it's a little, little bit bigger, so in case I have to thread anything else from the engine bay, you can go through here. And now we're just going to wire it down here, basically following this path here, past the door hinge, and then I'm actually probably going to zip tie it here onto this, and then we're going to thread it down under, and then through, and pull it. But yeah, guys, use my favorite little unibit here, which we, we saw in the spoiler video for doing the body pieces. Really great investment. But yeah, let's go ahead and finish that off and we'll wire it through. All right guys, from this side, we wanna plug in our air to fill connector. And um, reason is we wanna know how much slack we actually have. So you can see right there, I have already unplugged it from the stock and I'm gonna run the wiring harness into it and then kinda of zip tie it up nice. Probably gonna just come from this side over here and run over, but I might go around, who knows. But the stock one, we're just gonna keep tucked right in here just basically down and then zip tie it so it doesn't move around and then we'll know how much slack we can pull through here and then basically tie up underneath there so that's where all the slack is going to go underneath the driver's side underbody area here where there's already other wires and stuff got my old sensor there uh, tied underneath zip tied in so it doesn't dangle around I'm trying to point to the zip tie but it's right there and i got the new one routing through here underneath my grounding wires and my pivot Ryzen wires coming through here, zip tight here, and fed in. So overall, nothing strange, pretty stealth, nothing out of the ordinary. But yeah guys, I'm gonna go on this side now and show you it being fed through here. So now when you feed this through, remember you guys don't wanna go on this side, you wanna go on the opposite side of the hinges. And again, you wanna take that little grommet out and we're gonna make a hole there so that's gonna fit through for this. So it looks like this is about a quarter inch and you wanna be a little bit tighter and because it's rubber, so we're gonna drill a quarter inch into that and thread that through and I'll show you guys what that looks like underneath if I can. But I'm gonna go ahead and again, using that OEM grommet, which again, I showed you, just kind of pops right off. We are gonna put a little hole in there, a quarter inch I think would be just perfect for that. Maybe a little bit more, but we'll test quarter inch first because we want that water sealing. If water gets in there, it can get into the body underneath here and get underneath, and we don't want that. So, even though this area is pretty much sealed up, but yeah, guys, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so, all right, guys, so we have basically our slack set up here perfectly. I started feeding it through the tube, and then I also got our pilot hole done, which is nice and sealed. And I probably put some silicone grease around there to kind of increase water resistance on the outside, even though it's a perfectly good fit. And basically, we're gonna pull it through and then do it on this side and then put the grommet back in. So basically I just gotta go underneath here, which is gonna be hard to see, but then I'm gonna pull the wire through. And once I do that, I'm gonna take all this wiring out here from the front, pull it through the back, and zip tied up in a bundle there, nice and tight. And then we're gonna wire up our slack here. But before we zip tie it, we're gonna figure out where our gauge pod's gonna go. And then basically put in our sensor in there and see how that looks and how we want it to be before we basically finalize the how taut it is underneath there. So let's go ahead and pull it through, guys. All right, guys, so I got all the wiring done. It's basically underneath here. Got it like zip tied and it's going through. And basically there's our bundles we need. So we're gonna just basically I decide the best position is I'm gonna have it come across here and then go up underneath here where it's gonna go into the glow shift thing. Glow shift uh, gauge holder, 52 millimeter. Had to drill, drill a bigger hole because the outlets on there, of course, are squared and bigger than the original circle, so I just made a circle right next to it, tapped it out. But the foam, and basically the plan is it's gonna mount right here. So it's not like always there, like basically in the way, but I can basically always see it when I need to, and it's basically right there. So we're gonna go ahead and mount it up like that, put it in, type the cables, put it through, start the car, see the air to fuel initially, and you guys will see what I'm talking about with the, with what it is running lean. And then we're gonna close out the video, guys. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, guys, so we just finished the install, got all the wires tucked. Again, I have it running like that. Might put a zip tie. Might have to put some new adhesive here because it's 
already starting to peel because I peeled it off once when I was trying to make the wires taut. So usually with adhesive, especially certain types, you need to put new adhesive on. But we're gonna go ahead and start it up. I think right there is like perfect. I'm able to kind of see what I need to see, but it's not like up here. I might. I got a gauge pod thing, but I need three, and I only have one right now. So I'll be like, when I get like oil pressure and like uh, I don't know oil temp or something, and then. Maybe move that one. I'm going to put that 3M foam adhesive home, heavy duty home adhesive on here. Probably cut something out and put it on the white type because it's already lost some uh, adhesive capabilities. But we're going to start it up. So you can see it says your readout right there. I love this feature because it actually shows the heat up for the air to fuel sensor and it actually has a readout here. I'm um, sorry about the oscillation. It's because uh, it, 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 you can see. It's at 60 hertz, so that's like the refresh rate of it. And so, of course, we're going to start it up right now. You guys are going to see what it runs at. Of course, it just starts up, so it's going to be a little bit rich. I had to change it to 60 on the uh, shutter speed, which is 60 frames a second, which matches the refresh rate of this. You can see it's going up to 13. And you can see it's still going up, it's still going up. Let me change this to uh, manual focus here so we can focus it ourselves. We're actually trying to look at here, which is the air to fuel. See, we're going up to 14, still climbing, still climbing, and that's where we're at. Now, watch when I get on the throttle here. Look at that, we're going all the way to 15. Then it kind of richens itself up, but that's after the throttle, so it kind of doesn't make any sense. Um, but yeah, guys, we're gonna go ahead and drive with it for a while. I'm gonna close off the video. I'm gonna close it out for the AEM install for air to fuel. All right, guys. I know this is a weird angle. I put my tripod away already because I'm gonna go home and have breakfast with my mom and cousin. So, uh, yeah, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. That includes the install for the AEM UE Go, but OBD2 version, the newer version of the air to fuel ratio sensor, along with other features. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I hope I gave some helpful tips if you want to do this for your car. The OBD2 version, not the wiring version. I figure the wiring version is going to be the same in terms of like your routing, cable routing, but you're going to have to tap into. So I definitely recommend the OBD2 version so you have to tap into your uh, any wiring harness. And as always, guys, God bless you and always enjoy the drive.